Hey everyone, it's Marie here. I would just like to talk with you guys today about ghost medicine. Um, excuse the hair, I just did yoga and had my hair up in a bun and I just kind of did this thing. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it's okay. It's nice natural volume I got going on here. Excuse me, <laughs> I'm just kidding. But I want to talk about ghost medicine. Now, you may or may not know what ghost medicine is. I am no expert on the subject, but I think in my own way I do practice it. It's um, it was where I first came across the idea of ghost medicine. It was introduced to me by Carlo. He is um, he was a Native American elder who tended the fire at my first EWF or Earth Warriors Festival. I um, participated in uh, two years ago in Ohio. Now, when he talked about ghost medicine, he talked about being quiet. His whole thing was being quiet, listening to things, let things teach you rather you teaching, you know, and speaking and such and such. And you would, he's, the way he described it was, you know, you, you have the herb in your hand having it in your hand and you're holding it in your hand and or you have it near you and it's just like you leave yourself open because you already have this wisdom within you your ancestors are always behind you they're always with you and you carry their wisdom with you and his thing was that by knowing that you allow yourself to open be open and you allow yourself to oh what's the word be receptive to the plants and the herbs that you're working with, allowing them to tell you what they're good for, tell you who they're good for, you know, etc. Now, I don't practice like actual um, medicine, actual herbal medicine, but what worry is like almost kind of like aromatherapy in a sense, or energy therapy, but with herbs. Some people, you know, do crystal healing, I do herbal healing. So I do hope to get in crystal healing someday, but right now I'm doing like herbal healing kind of thing, aromatherapy. And with it, I don't necessarily, half the time I don't really know what the, the herbs I'm using actually represent, you know, in a metaphysical sense, in a magical sense. However, I kind of just like, let them tell me what they're good for, you know? I let them tell me, you know, like sage, good, everyone knows good for, you know, purifying, things like that, but let, but also to me it's like good for clarity, and so, I let the herbs tell me, you know, tell my senses what they're good for, their energies tell me, because with herb work comes energy work as well, because, you know, herbs give off energy, plants give off each individual energy, and what I like, what I like to do is I just kind of listen, you know, clear my mind, you know, take a deep breath and allow the herb to tell me what it's good for. And so, I recently, I don't have an example with me, but um, for Christmas, I'm making some of my friends herbal pillows, and I knitted them. Um, this is uh, one I'm doing now for a friend, I'm just kind of knitting it, but um, I knit it, I stuff it with, you know, a little stuffing, and then I create like an herbal sachet in it, and I don't even know what necessarily I'm doing for it, I'm, no, I'm not making a particular thing, I'm not real, there's no really no purpose to it other than, you know, I want to create something to help my friend out, you know, to help them feel more at ease and more at peace, and you know, just to help them grow, and so for my friends, I made him one that was good. For some reason, it just connected me. I picked up herbs, and I just picked a whole bunch of herbs, and I just started throwing them together. And apparently, it was good for, you know, inspiration and connection with the divine, and you know, artistic inspiration and connection with the divine and intuition, kind of like that. But I put on the herbs that, to me, and energy-wise, represent those sort of connections I wanted to create. But I also um, put in two different herbs that represent that person's personal energy, and why. And the wh why I do this is because, um, yes, you can have like an herbal sachet or an herbal thing that has energies you want manifested, but in order to make them stronger and more clear and the bond stronger, I like to put in herbs that 
that truly connect with the person's energy. So and thus, therefore, it connect, creates like a connection, you know, person, connective herbs to the pouch. So it's like a real, just a big connection. And so I put two different herbs in the pouch because to me, it represented him. And that's what I usually do when I do my pouches. I usually listen to the herbs and let them tell me what they want to do or like what they're good for and how who who they work best with. And then I put in herbs that represent that person that I'm making the item for. And that is a kind of like vague representation of ghost medicine. Some people are really good at it and can actually legitimately use it for like you know physical medicine. I'm <laughs> nowhere like near that. I mainly use it for energy work and aromatherapy, things like that. So that is the idea of ghost medicine, you know, not really having to look up everything in a book, not really having to research anything. No, I would recommend it, you know, if you are creating like ingestive medicines because you might not know what herbs poisonous and what isn't, but if you're going to do like make herbal sachets or pouches or dollies and things like that for people, I would recommend trying, you know, the whole ghost medicine thing out. Because we all, it's like, it's honestly, it has a lot to do with your intuition and you trusting your intuition and being open and receptive to the energies around you. Sorry, my back is really itchy. That's <laughs> being o really open and really, really receptive to the energies around you. And that's what ghost medicine is. And so, and I, it's really awesome because I get, always get really, really positive feedback from my work. All my friends are like, wow, you know, I've had like herbal stuff for me done before, but this really connects with me. It's because I do the ghost medicine thing. Because you have like, so you have plenty of herbs that could potentially create the same effect that you want them to, but only a few of those, or maybe one of the, out of all those herbs, connect to the person you're making it for and create the effect you're looking for. And so it creates it when you're able when it's able, when the herbs are able to connect to the person they're intended for more clearly then it creates a stronger effect in the general overall pouch, if that makes sense. But that's kind of what I do with ghost medicine. I let the herbs talk to me, I let them tell me where they want to go, what they want to do, who they're good for, and I just kind of let my hands do the work and my spirit, I let spirit connect with the herbs and let my past wisdom from my ancestors connect to the words. And herbs, words, sorry, <laughs> I'm really tired, but I let my, the wisdom from my past ancestors connect to the herbs and create that connection and that bond that may or may not have been severed. But that is what I believe, you know, that's what I think ghost medicine is, you know, is allowing, because in the sense it's kind of like letting the spirits of the herbs, you know, let them talk to you, let them, their spirit talk to your spirit, and so it's like, you know, ghost medicine, rather than, you know, physically looking up in a book or having someone tell you. And I think herbal work this way is more effective just because you're more reliant on the actual energies of the person you're working with or working for and the herbs you're working with. But, I don't know, do, do any of you think you, like, do any of you guys practice ghost medicine? Um, it is a Native American concept, but it is also, you know, a general, like, animist, animistic, um, shaman-like practice, because my great-grandfather, my great-grandmother, especially my great-grandmother, she was an, an indigenous Filipino, she was at the Ifugao, and she practiced, you know, kind of ghost medicine, her and my great-grandfather did, he was an Ifugao, but... She, I think she taught him, but it, they both practice, you know, the herbal medicine and people come to them and they didn't really read books or anything like that. They just pick herbs out for that person and created poultices and things like that till the person then worked for them and so people kept coming to them. And so that's the whole idea of ghost medicine is not having to rely on the written word or the heard or the spoken word, but rely on your own spirit, rely on the spirit of the herbs. Because they'll tell you what they're good for. And I think there's like some poetic justice in that, you know? Kind of like not telling nature what it wants to do, letting nature tell you what it wants to do kind of thing. So I really like ghost medicine. But yeah, do any of you guys practice? Do any of you guys work with herbs in such a way? I don't know. I really like working with herbs a lot. And I love tilling the earth with my hands. I love working them. I love their energies. 
And that's amazing. I don't know. I would love to hear from you guys. Anything's great. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Blessed be. Namaste.